I had two people in mind, but one of them is going to be more prominent because he just passed away and his name is Iraj Fezish. So uh, in kind of keeping up with our theme of uh, sort of discussing very old men, I think, <laughs> in this episode. Um, yeah, he was uh, he was an Iranian novelist, translator and a <clears throat> playwright. Uh, super famous in Iran, one of the most famous Iranian writers, and he was famous for his work of satire and comedy. He would write these fantastic plays of comedy. He, he had a satirical column in which he would make fun of the uh, modern poets of Iran and all that. Just an amazing writer. Educated in, uh, uh, I believe he was educated in France. He studied law in France. Mm. And then he came back to Iran, worked for the foreign ministry till the revolution, and then uh, passed away. But most, uh, he had, I mean, his works are fantastic, and I'm going to talk about some of them. His most famous work is called Daija Napoleon, or My, My Dear Uncle Napoleon, which is, about, which is a, this glimpse into a traditional Iranian family. At very, it's sort of a semi, sort of high gentry, petty aristocracy family. And uh, it's kind of, in, but in that family and in their surrounding, there is all these other people who are from different uh, classes of Iranian society. And Iranian society is very class-based. It's kind of, it's somewhere between India and UK, mm-hmm. somewhere like that. It's not as bad as India. It's not as, I mean, it's closer to UK. Well, India uh, has a lot of sect to it as caste. well, which is, I guess, a bit caste. different. Yeah, sex as well. But Kate, they got, we got, oh, Shiaism has a lot of sects, mm. but we don't have as much of a well defined case mm-hmm. according to, uh, you know, everything. So, but so in this family, that is, um, I mean, uh, this is a translation of what Iraj Pezesh said about the theme of the book. The main theme is the backwardness of a class of freeloaders and dear for no reasons as they see a new class of young people who, due to their knowledge and a specialization, uh, uh, rise in front of them. They can tolerate them and patronize and condescend them. So you have this uncle who's the elder of the family and he loves napoleon because he fought against the british and he he has and he's has the conspiracy mindset it's the best book if you want to understand conspiracy uh, mindset it is the best book and i am including english language books Mm -hmm. on the matter too and there is a great tv show a fantastic tv show made based on this book which in my view, even suppresses the book in terms of greatness. It's even funnier. It's even better. And I would say it's as good as the best prestige TV. And it's produced 40 years ago. Yeah, I was going to say it's from, yeah. Yeah, it's bit, it's, I would put it in terms of like all editing, acting, all of that. Uh, it's up there with like any prestige TV, Westworld, uh, Deadwood, whatever you want to say. Uh, the dialogue is fantastic, obviously. And this uh, Daijan Apollon is a bit of a microgasm of the whole Iranian society and how different classes and how Iranian society sort of operated, especially after the fall of Qajars and the rise of Pahlavis. So it's a great glimpse and they, it shows the hypocrisies of the religious people, of non-religious people, of all of them. So... And yeah, he he passed away sadly in Paris. He couldn't come back to Iran following the revolution mm. because he was in foreign office and all that. He had to go. So it was sad that he never got to come back. But yeah, I wanted to. And by the way, he was translator of the works of Voltaire and Moliere into Persian, which I assume must be very difficult. Uh, he, was, he also wrote a sort of a couple of historical books, a reflections on... Russian Revolution and reflections on French Revolution. So he was a bit of a very interesting character. Yeah, it definitely seems like a fascinating guy. So I'm guessing the book very quickly turned into the TV show. Because I think I mean, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Within 10, it was published yeah. in the 70s, the book. So I guess the TV show. And yeah, the TV show, I remember through some channels or something and made a comeback Se- while I was a kid. And oh, yeah, it's so- always everybody very... was like loving it and saying how it's the best show ever and i guess so it really made some it was one of those good shows that really make astute observations of like society right the best kind like sopranos for instance 
Yeah, but I mean, it's a, uh, the closest thing to it. To, to be honest, there is this one idiot in Iran uh, who claims that uh, Daijan Apollon is a translation of, uh, is a translation or like a ripoff of Tristram Shandy, which is this fantastic, Tristram Shandy is this amazing book from uh, 17th, 18th century UK, where there's this guy who is, <laughs> Tristram Shandy is the main character. He's, he's trying to tell his life story, but he keeps getting distracted and tangled and he talks about his uncle and it's fantastic. It's awesome. But it's a, it's in that genre. It's in the genre of like maybe Jane Austen in a bit, like uh, sort of decadence, but funny and heartwarming and you know, but but there is a bit of a subversion and all that. It's amazing. It's and his works. My favorite work of his, which I found out yesterday, that his favorite work of uh, his as well. I I hope you put the picture. Uh, is called Adab Mart Behzed Ust, which is um, which is which means uh, your manners are more important than your belongings. Mm. Basically, that's what it means. And like it that. had the best, yeah, the best cover page. And that one is also a great, that's a great example of like how Iranian society would have worked in like during Pahlavi era with the, because it's all about the corruption in, uh, in the governmental offices, in the public offices. And it's all about this one guy who the devil himself cannot uh, uh, make corrupt. And how, because he, he's uncorruptible, his whole family are miserable because mm. they can't afford anything. They <laughs> don't have anything. It's just annoying. And then this devil himself comes down to make him uh, accept some bribe, but he just keeps repeating that famous sentence, that, which is the name of the book. So his work is fantastic. And I, I do think the funny side of Iran is a side that is less seen, but Iran, Iran has a great tradition of satire and uh, you know that type of thing, and he's the best in the contemporary age. He wow, was wow. really great stuff. It kind of made me cool. want to read the book, like the novel. And I don't really read fiction. It, the novel but... is definitely worth uh, worth uh, while, but I would say I I think I prefer the TV show. Yeah. TV show is better. <laughs> but I mean, the if the jokes, novel's in um, English, I'll understand it better than if I watch the TV show in Farsi. I would, yeah, I think probably you can even read it in French because I assume the French translation might be. I don't know if but he that did doesn't the French. Help. Yeah. All right. English would be much easier, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> I could. But, uh, nice, very nice. Yeah, and another person passed away from Iran. I felt I highlight because he's not very known and he had a bit of a rare politics. Anushirawan, no, sorry, um, Anush, Ardeshir Zahedi. He was the son of a guy who was the military leader who did the coup against Mossadegh, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. But, he would, but he would go become Iran's foreign ministry for a while mm -hmm. and Iran's ambassador to US, I believe. And he was probably, in my view, he was the most, he was the best statement, statesman Iran has ever had. Okay. And sadly, he passed away. Yeah. He, he was one of the very few monarchist who he, after he left Iran he never supported any foreign government mm. he in fact even supported Iranian foreign policy even though because as you know most monarchists are very oh anything that Iran does is bad like yeah. it, what did Iran do it's bad, <laughs> yeah. it's, bad. it's automatically bad. but he was very fair-minded he was very good and yeah he was from a gen these two both of them are from a generation that I think sadly I don't know there are very few people like them that throughout their life, they took a line and stood by it. And yeah, paths, passing of both of them was very sad. So, you know. I see. Okay. All right. Very, very interesting stuff. Hopefully I'll put the right pictures in the right place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All the ones that you've sent me. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's and they look a bit alike. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was looking at them like, great. But we'll get to <laughs> that when we get to that in the editing process. But exactly. okay, yeah, hopefully, I mean, it's both a sad segment or not, because that means if we had this on a weekly basis, we'd be hoping that somebody dies oh, every yeah. week. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it won't okay. be a reoccurring Chill series. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you it see, it's Thursday a... evening and I'm looking for dead people. No, still yeah. alive. <laughs> this guy's <Sam>. almost dead. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the hospital. Shall we visit and maybe something gets unplugged? <laughs>
<laughs> no, no, it's going to be a, a special, like we're going to do this segment as they come. We're not going to try to, you know, we're not going to try to manipulate the market. <laughs> People Jesus, find out through the show that their loved ones have died. They're like, what the hell? I just saw grandpa. Oh. <laughs> was famous sorry guys we wanted to discuss <laughs> his ideas we couldn't do it when he's alive <laughs> but okay or I, her I, ideas I it kind of shows our <laughs> hair oh yes sorry, sorry but, our biases maybe um or yeah. just you know the world we live in i'll, I'll know... find a couple of dead ladies <laughs> what do you want <laughs> exactly <laughs> Marie Curie. Okay, that's right. 